For over a year, Kate Morrison has been toiling away as a cleaning lady in a restaurant. Her job entails cleaning the entire premises and assisting in the kitchen with tasks like taking out the trash and washing dishes, all of which are tough jobs. Despite being financially strained, Kate's salary was just enough to support her three children. Sadly, her husband chose an easy but low-paying job that didn't make the situation any better. Despite his lack of involvement, the mother never gave up hope for a better future and provided her beloved children with second-hand clothing from flea markets or thrift stores. Nevertheless, she kept her faith in a brighter tomorrow. Kate had become familiar with Simon's self-centered interests and disregard for his family's impoverished condition. Thus, her patience has run out. Kate's family was not just composed of her three children, but also her 90-year-old grandmother, Charla Edwards. The elderly woman was greatly respected and beloved by her great-grandchildren, who showered her with love and affection. Gratefully, Mrs. Edwards' age didn't affect her well-being and she could manage herself without any help from others. However, that couldn't be said about Kate's kids, Ethan, Kyle, and since the boys Ethan and Kyle had only one age year difference, they could wear the same clothes while being a girl. Sally needed new clothes. Unfortunately, Simon didn't want to understand any of this. He only ever wanted to spend money on himself and was convinced that raising children was solely his wife's responsibility. Therefore, the neglectful father could easily blow his entire monthly salary on drinks in a sports bar. What kind of father are you, Simon? Will you understand? You can't keep pretending like you don't have any responsibilities. I can't provide for the entire family on my. Kate said in despair, but Simon was already used to his wife's snagging and knew that her anger would subside sooner or later. He knew that Kate was a kind and sympathetic person, and so he used her kindness as he pleased. Mom, why are my classmates laughing at my clothes? Is it because I always wear Ethan's hand-me-downs? Kyle asked with tears in his eyes, hearing her son's words. Kate turned to the window and tried to pretend that everything was. But in fact, a hurricane of resentment for her husband was raging inside her, which at any second can turn into an unstoppable tornado. But Simon persistently continued to pretend that nothing was happening. He didn't even care that his youngest son was mocked for being unable to afford even a donut from the school cafeteria trying to justify himself in his own eyes. Simon blamed his wife for all the family's problems, claiming that it was all her fault for being unable to save up money. Meanwhile, Kate's grandmother chose not to take any of the spouses, hoping to save her granddaughter's marriage, which was clearly falling apart. Obviously, things couldn't go on like that forever. And one day Kate filed for divorce. Having received the news, Simon got visibly nervous at first. He even tried to persuade his wife to give their marriage another chance. But when he realized that Kate was dead set in her intention, he tried to interfere with her plans by deliberately delaying the divorce proceedings. Fortunately, Kate immediately hired a qualified lawyer who quickly put an end to Simon's sabotage and put him in his place. Moreover, Kate was horrified to learn that her husband intended to sue her for half of her parental home. So that's how it is. You live side by side with the person for several years and don't even suspect that one fine moment he may turn out to be such a scoundrel. Kate thought rejoicing at her long-awaited freedom. Unfortunately, and after the divorce, the problems of Kate's large family only multiplied. The woman now knew that she was all alone and could only rely on herself. The problems were partly due to the fact that Kate's grandmother fell ill and now required expensive meds. Meanwhile, Kate and Ethan grew by leaps and browns, which meant that they would need new clothes soon. Unfortunately, Kate was so low on funds that she couldn't afford to buy anything. One day while cleaning up at the restaurant, Kate looked at a pile of plates with leftover food that stood in the corner of the kitchen next to the waistband. Taking a closer look, Kate was surprised to notice that many of the dishes were left untouched. Moreover, it wasn't just salads or appetizers. There were also plates with steaks, pieces of marbled beef or tendered salmon baked in its own juice. Such an abundance of delicious food made Kate almost dizzy. On top of that, the unfortunate cleaning lady hadn't eaten anything since last evening, and thus her stomach was growling all day long. That's an idea. What if I bring a plastic container tomorrow and take home the food that the customers have sent back? For some reason, a thought. 
She was very happy to come up with such an unusual idea. The head of the hungry cleaning lady immediately started calculating how much money she could save if she were to take the risk of bringing leftovers home from the restaurant. This way, I would definitely be able to buy a new jacket for Evan and sign Kyle up for basketball. He's been dreaming of it for so long. Kate thought happily. So the next day, the cleaning lady returned from work with a container full of delicious, nutritious food. Needless to say, the kids pounced on the food brought by their mother and devoured it in seconds. The truth was that the young members of the family were already rather tired of the corn tortillas. Their grandmother's Charlotte kept baking for. The next morning wanting to build on the success of her venture, Kate brought to work two plastic containers instead of just one. That amount of food was supposed to feed the family to satiety, and that's how it went. Since then, of course, Kate took only those dishes that remained untouched by customers. The woman understood perfectly well that most of the restaurant's customers were wealthy. People who didn't see a problem in sending back food or simply leaving it untouched. What didn't seem like a big deal to the wealthy customers helped Kate and her family make ends. All this time at the restaurant, Chef Henry Rogers never reprimanded the young cleaning lady for taking home leftover food. Kate probably has a pet or maybe even a couple of pets, and why should I worry about food that would go into the trash? It's already been paid for, anyway. Henry Rogers thought he had been working in the restaurant for over 15 years and was accustomed to treating life with a dose of irony and calmness. The chef knew that Kate never received any complaints about her work, and therefore he simply didn't feel like losing such a valuable employee. And so it went on for six months. During this time, Kate managed to save up enough money to buy clothes for not only Ethan and Kyle, but even for the three-year-old Sally. Meanwhile, the young woman had repeatedly caught herself thinking that she did the right thing six months ago when she decided to divorce Simon. That scoundrel hadn't spent a single cent on his children for so long, and he even wanted to sue me for my house and sell it to settle his debts. Kate thought indigently. Time went by, but Simon still remained a cunning, lazy person accustomed to living at the expense of others. At some point, Kate decided to petition for sole custody of the kids to protect them from their father's harmful influence and hypocrisy. To do this, Kate Morrison turned to the same lawyer who handled her divorce. Alfred Green was rather experienced in family law and was considered one of the best specialists in his field. Discussing all the details of the upcoming trial of the client, Mr. Green couldn't help but notice the plastic containers with leftover food standing on the kitchen counter. The lawyer was well aware that Kate worked as a cleaner in the restaurant and therefore didn't ask where exactly those leftovers came from. But the important part was that Alfred Green knew the owner of the restaurant were his client. Thus, the lawyer decided to see Brian Miller, who took over the restaurant after the sudden death of his father. Of course, the owner of the restaurant used this occasion to treat his friend to a glass of wine and some appetizers. At first, the friends chatted about unimportant things, and only about an hour later, did Alfred Green switch to a more pressing issue. Did you know, Brian, that your cleaning lady, Kate Morrison, is taking leftovers home? The lawyer asked with an embarrassed cough. Yes, I actually knew that. The chef told me. I think she has a Labrador or a Doberman that. I don't remember what exactly it was, but I don't care. She can take all the leftovers she wants. I have no use for them, answered the young restaurant owner with a smile. Actually, Kate's family is so poor that she eats this food herself and feeds it to her children. And grandmother Alfred shared and lowered his eyes guilt away. What? How's that? Are you sure? That's true, Ryan exclaimed and grabbed his head with his hands. The young man saw the answer to his question in the lawyer's eyes. He was sure the man was telling the truth. Therefore, as soon as Alfred went home, Ryan called the chef and asked him to come over to his place. He wanted to get to the bottom of things. Tell me, Henry, do you know who Kate's feeding the leftovers to? Ryan asked without any transit. No, Mr. Miller, I assumed that she was taking it to feed her dog or some other pet. Henry Reen sort of stammering on every word. The owner just shook his head. Sadly, in response, the young man couldn't understand how the mother of three children ended up in such a terrible situation, tormented by the feelings of guilt. He promised himself to help the poor woman forced to eat leftovers from the restaurant kitchen. The next day Kate was called into the owner's office and her heart skipped a beat. 
Why did Mr. Miller ask for me? Did I do something wrong? Is he going to fire me? The woman thought anxiously, but when the owner of the restaurant handed her an envelope full of cash, the woman was both confused and astonished. Sir, there must have been some kind of mistake. Are you sure? That is all from. It looks like at least six months worth of my salary. Kate Morrison whispered timidly. There were tears in the woman's eyes, which touched the owner of the restaurant very much. No thanks. Needed. Kate, it's your money now and you can spend it however you think would be best. Brian replied. In response to this, Kate smiled shyly and then plucking up her courage. Invited Brian Miller over for apple pie and tea. Meanwhile, Kate's joy knew no bounds and her mood was simply wonderful. Of course, Brian accepted her invitation and promised to come over for some pie. At some point, the owner of the restaurant caught himself thinking that he liked the young and strong-willed woman who wasn't afraid of facing her problems and found a way to provide for her family. Consequently, as a sign of admiration and respect for Kate Ryan, he showed up on her doorstep the following evening with an exquisite bouquet of roses. As they got to know each other better, the two young people gradually felt drawn to each other. This attraction eventually culminated in a marriage ceremony at the city hall after just six months, marking their commitment to stay together forever. Kate and Brian sacred the precious moment with the family, chuckles from the children and Grandma Charlotte's humor creating a warm, jovial atmosphere. They were just basking in the happy moment and enjoying life.